appointed unto man once to die. It is 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 appointed unto man. It is appointed unto man once to die. It is appointed unto man once to die. It is appointed unto man once to die. Then the judgment. Order in the court. Order in the court. I said order in the court. This court finds Richard E. Mahoney guilty of first degree murder. And we sentence him to death. I didn't do it, Your Honor. I was framed. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Order in the court. Order in the court. How did I, Richard E. Mahoney, end up sentenced to death by electrocution? All I ever wanted was for someone to love me. You know, to care. I never had anyone really to love me. I remember when I was a little boy, my father left us. I never saw him again. I loved my daddy. My mama drank. She used to beat me for no reason at all. She'd come home after she'd been out drinking and she- Richard! Richard! Where are you? Do you hear me, Richard? You better not be hiding from me. You'll be sorry if I find you. Mama, I'm right here. Why didn't you come when I called you? I don't know why I work so hard to take care of a lazy, good for nothing brat. Come here. No, Mama. I'm sorry. I wasn't hiding. Honest. Hold still, you little brat. Ow. <coughs> Mama, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're hurting me. I'll make you sorry. Ah. Ah. You'll remember to come next time I call you. Uh, leave the kid alone. We got things to do. Come on, baby. Okay, but you better be sorry, you no good brat. I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Years went by, then one day, when my mother and one of her boyfriends were out drinking, I decided to run away from home. I ran till I couldn't run anymore. I never wanted my mama to hit me again. I was 12 years old when I left mother. You know what? She didn't even care I left. It was scary living out in the streets. I would get so hungry that I'd look through garbage cans just to try to find some food. During the years that followed, I found myself doing things I never dreamed I'd do just to stay alive. One cold afternoon, I met Jim. He saw me huddling beneath an awning in the city park. He must have seen my desperation because he asked me if I'd like to work for him. Hey, kid, how would you like to work for Jim? I was to be his delivery boy, no questions asked. In exchange for the deliveries, I'd get room and board. Jim was like the father I'd always wanted to have. He'd joke around with me and acted like he really cared. The phone would ring at all hours, night and day. I'd pick up small packages to deliver. Years flew by, and Jim asked me to become more involved with the business. I knew that it wasn't right, but hey, Jim was my friend, my only friend. Who else cared? Nobody, only Jim. I began to make money, lots of money. I owned things that I only dreamed about. Then one day, everything went wrong. Meet me right away at the old warehouse. The one on the back side of 47th Street. I left immediately. When I got to the building, Jim wasn't in sight. I waited a few minutes and decided to go inside. Jim was never late. The warehouse was dark and smelly. My eyes adjusted as I wandered farther into the building. As I looked around, I caught sight of something that sent chills through me. There on the floor, laying in a puddle of blood was a lady. I'd seen her with Jim before. Panic filled me. 
I made a wild dash for the door trying to get back to my car, but the doorway was already full with police. They were everywhere. They handcuffed me and took me to jail. They told me I was being held for first degree murder. Later in court, I was found guilty and sentenced to death by the electric chair, thanks to my dear friend Jim, who betrayed me. He testified against me in court. Lies. I should have known no one really cared. I'm in prison now, waiting to be executed. Hey, you have someone here to see you. I don't want to see anyone. Be quiet. You, you have five minutes, no more. Hello, Richard. What do you want? I have a message from someone who cares deeply about you. Someone who cares? I don't want to hear it. No one cares anything about me. Jesus does, Richard. Jesus loves you so much that he came to this earth to make you his own. What? Make me his own? Look, no one has ever wanted me. God does. The Bible says God so loved you, Richard, that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for your sins. And if you'll believe in him, you won't perish in hell forever because of your sins. But you'll have eternal life in heaven with God. Richard, you're about to die, and then you'll stand before God to be judged. Either you belong to him and you'll live forever with him in heaven, or you'll die in your sins and spend eternity in hell, a place of eternal fire and torment. Jesus loves you, Richard. He wants you to be his own. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Turn from them, and he will make your life new. Why would God want me? I've been so bad. I'm no good. My dad didn't want me. My mom didn't love me. And Jim, he... Your time's up. Could I have a few more minutes? No. Time's up. We have to get the murderer ready. Richard, Jesus loves you. He wants you. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Ask him, Richard, Richard. No one has ever loved me. God, could it be true that you would take someone like me as your own? I'm sorry for all the bad things I've done. I want to be yours. Jesus, take my life. It's time. I'm not afraid anymore. Jesus has forgiven me. I'm his now. He loves me. I don't want to hear about forgiveness from a murdering drug dealer. I was strapped into the execution chair and great currents of electricity surged through my body. Richard, you really love me, don't you? You really love me, don't you, Jesus? Yes, Richard, I really do. Son, welcome home. possible. The producer, Bill Salmon, the crew, and too many others to name. I put a lot of effort into this project, and I have achieved another of my personal goals. Thank you. <laughs> Who am I? Well, I'm Jessica D. Young, one of Hollywood's brightest stars. I've done nine motion pictures and won all the most coveted awards. I was just awarded number one actress of the year. Again, <laughs> it seems everything I touch turns to gold. Here I am at the top. Do you know I earn more money in one night than most people make in a year? Do you know why? It's because I'm Jessica D. Young. I've worked hard to get to the top. 
delivery for Jessica D. Young. I've got a dozen of our finest red roses from one of your fans. Where would you like them? Oh, just put them in my dressing room with all the others. Sure thing, Miss Young. Excuse me, Miss Young. Can we take your picture? Could I have your autograph? Me too, please. See? They love me. Everyone does. Miss Young, I've got something I want to give to you. What is it? It's a track. A religious track. I'm not interested. I've got everything anyone would ever want. Well, the Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? God doesn't want you to lose your soul. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, so that if we would repent of our sins, Jesus would forgive us and we could have eternal life. Did you say repent? Give me a break. You must be one of those born-again Christians. I don't want your Jesus, nor do I need him to forgive me of my sins. I'm Jessica Young. I'll make my own way. Go away. But Miss Young, Jesus said he's the only way to God. I don't think you heard me. I said go. But I felt like it was urgent for me to talk to you about Jesus. Did you hear her? She said go away. Quit harassing the lady. I said go, Joey! Joey, get over here. Hey, you bothering Miss Young? No, I'm leaving. Please, Miss Young, take some time and read the track. What are you so upset about? It's just a little piece of paper with some writing on it. Besides, the kid meant well. Those kind of people are so narrow-minded. Jesus is the only way. Everything is sin to them. Sin will be judged. You need to be forgiven. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Repent. I've had it up to here with those born-again Christians trying to convert me. If you don't believe it, why do you let it bother you? Come on, baby, let's go. The night is young, and I have the winner of this year's Best Actress with me. Let's party. <laughs> My boyfriend Joey and I drove off to celebrate. We danced and drank and danced and drank some more. I was having a wonderful time. Joey offered me some funny looking pills. Hey baby, you wanna feel real good? Try these. I just got these from Frankie and you know he's always got good stuff. Oh yeah. Wow, I feel strange. Joey. I took two. Maybe I should have only taken one. Maybe I shouldn't have taken it with alcohol. Maybe I shouldn't have drank so much that night. But I'm Jessica D. Young. I control my destiny. I control my life. I'm important. People listen to me. I'm popular. I'm a star. I've got money. Lots of money. I have things. Things most of you could only dream of having. I'm Jessica D. Young. What went wrong? Somebody quit call an ambulance. Jesse, baby, are you all right? Baby, Jessica, come on. Everyone stand back. Jess, come on, honey. You gotta snap out of this. You got movies to do, fans out there. Come on, Jesse. I'm sorry, we've tried everything. She's dead. No, no! I never knew you. 
Marcus and Jessica DiDio, the movie star. We get to spend all eternity with one of the greatest actresses that have ever lived. Take her. No! No! No, Jesus! Forgive me! I'm Jessica D. Young! Jesus may not know you, Jessica D. Young, but I do. And I've got a place where you'll burn forever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus! Jesus, give me another chance! This is Bradley Williams. What can I do for you, sir? Actually, I'm calling on behalf of our community to thank you for all the hard work you did to make our new recreational building possible. You're welcome, Mr. Williams. I wish all the citizens of our city cared for the welfare of others like you do. You're a fine lady. Well, thank you, Mr. Williams. You will let me know if there is anything else that I can do. I sure will. Thanks again, Mrs. Parks. Goodbye. Who am I? My name is Susan Parks. I'm a devoted community worker, active in the public schools, a busy member in our local church, influential in government of our city. My husband and I donate our finances to our churches, community, and other worthy charities. Honey, the kids won't be home until after nine, so I'm taking you out for dinner. That's wonderful. I do need to go by Mrs. Gulliver's house. She's in charge of the community food drive, and I told her I'd drop off some groceries tonight. That's fine. Let's go. <laughs> Isn't that Dorothy's home? Yes, it is. Dorothy should be expecting us. Hello, Dan. Susan. Hello, Dorothy. Where can I put these groceries? Right over there is just fine. How is the food drive going? It's going well. We still have another week, and the donations are pouring in. I'll be out in the car. It was nice to see you again, Dorothy. You too, Dan. If you need any more help, let me know. I've headed up the food drive in this area for years, plus clothing drives and the... Susan, you're a very busy lady. I'd love your help. But, Susan, I'd also like to help you. Help me? With what? I'm not heading up a committee right now. I know that. I'd like to help you know that when you died, you'd go to heaven. Susan, if you died tonight, would you go to heaven? Of course I would. Why would you go to heaven? Dorothy, you have a lot of nerve. You know why. I'm a good person. Everyone knows that. I've done so much good for our community, the churches, the schools. I've given and I've given and I've given. I've given my time and finances. I've opened my home. Susan, I didn't mean to offend you. I know you've done many good things, but nothing we do will make us good enough to go to heaven. The Bible says all our righteousness or good deeds are filthy rags. You can't trust in your works to get you to heaven because in spite of all the good we do, all of us have sinned. Sin will keep us from heaven. God's holy. God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. He rose from the dead three days later only by giving our lives to Jesus can we be saved from the punishment of our sins. He died so we could be forgiven for our sins and become God's own. Susan, we must give our lives to Jesus, repenting of our sins and asking him to forgive us for them. I'm a good person. I don't need what you're talking about. I go to church, Dorothy. I'm very religious. Excuse me, my husband is waiting for me in the car. Susan, please don't leave. I'd like to pray with you. Hmm. 
Are you okay? I'm fine. It's Dorothy. She's one of those Jesus fanatics. She cornered me and asked me if I died tonight, would I go to heaven? She has a lot of nerve. I'd say so, especially after we came by to drop off food for the need. Dan, look out! I've done and let me into heaven. Jesus. Jesus, what's happening? Help me! Jesus, I've earned heaven. Tell them to let me go. I'm a good person. Look who's here. It's Mrs. Goodworks. My, you burned a this one down on earth, weren't you? It's too bad your good works won't wash away your sins here. Only Jesus' blood will do that for you. <laughs> and you've rejected his gift of salvation. You're mine. Now you can pray for your sins forever. No! Spend eternity. 